All right, in this video, what I'm going to do is we're going to eliminate this uh, small little fuel tank and we're going to add a, a diaphragm type pulse fuel pump and we're going to hook it up to the 12 gallon fuel cell right here via a Y. We're going to put a, a inline filter in and um, that should do it. Oh, we've got to pick up a, uh, a port off the engine to uh, grab the uh, positive and negative pulses off the motor to uh, operate that fuel pump. So uh, stick with me. So what I really wanted to do was find the fuel line and pull it out and put a three-way fitting in so I could just leave that existing tank in place. But the fuel line is so hidden that that is not possible on on this motor so I had to uh, remove the fuel tank I've been wrenching on small engines especially since I was about 13 and this motor right here the Vanguard six and a half um, is the was the hardest fuel tank I've ever taken off a small engine I mean, it was almost a hour job. So I'm going to I'm going to pull it off cuz now it's easy cuz I got the bolts out. But these two studs here went down in here. And I had to get underneath to get these nuts out, which was terribly hard. Get under here to hold on to the get the nuts off. Um the other thing I had to do to get up here to hold these, to grab these nuts, because this is still in place, is I had to loosen up the starter, which requires taking this rectifier off, some other brackets under here. Then I had to take the two um, bolts off right here to hold the starter on, and then pull the starter down to get underneath here it just it's just a pain um, and then there's a couple of there's a bolt right here I thought there was two but there's one right here that came in here and so you got to get to it this way so you got to take this business out and get your throttle in the right position let's see there you go and right there's the third bolt but an hour later, I finally got it off, and there's my fuel line. So, uh, yeah, it's. I guess they figure you're never going to change that tank off of there, but, you know. Um, the reason I'm doing that is because this only lasted about an hour and 15 minutes. So, if you had multiple jobs in one day, you had to fill this on virtually every job. And it was just, when you forgot to fill it, You'd be uh, rinsing or something or whatever, and you'd hear it sputter and, and die. So then, it, I don't know, it's just a pain in the butt. So I put the starter back on here. I was I was going to film this, and when I started, I was I was cussing it so bad. I thought I probably ought not show that. So, uh, but anyway, I went over what you needed to do. All right, so here's a bracket and shield. I can only assume it's a shield because it, it goes over the starter right here a little bit. Uh, otherwise, they wouldn't need that. But anyway, here that little crapper is. So we've got to mount this back so I can have a, you know, access to my key. I was going to just leave this off and remote, you know, install this somewhere else, but the wires wouldn't reach and I just thought, you know what, heck with it, I'll just put it all back on here. But now the tank is gone and so I don't have those studs so I'm gonna have to put a bolt in there I'm just trying to get these wires on the insides where they were so now th this side I can I can get under here and and get a, a nut on here for a, a bolt but this side is you can't get in there and so I can't you know, I, I need to get a bolt in there, either the bolt or a nut, and tighten it up. 
So what I'm going to do is uh, bring a bolt up from the bottom. I've already checked this out. It will fit like that. But with this over the top of it, I won't be able to uh, put a wrench, a backing wrench on this nut to hold it. So I'm going to take and weld this pin on here like that. And it can swing over when I'm tightening it and it'll swing over the other way when I'm taking it off. And so that's one way of getting around it. So I'm gonna throw a weld on that. I'm set up to uh, spot that little pin on place. And guys, having like a cheap welder like this around um, is invaluable when you're uh, mocking up stuff, building stuff for yourself. I mean, this is, this is the lowest you can get, um, but it does the job. I mean, how would I do this if I didn't have a welder to try to hold that bolt? Take it to a welder and have them do it or, or drill a hole in there and drive a pin in. There's just no good way of doing that. And then also, I just think this is like 30 bucks from Yes Welder too. It's a, works really good, auto darkening helmet. All right, so I've got it welded on there. I mean, I was I was really too hot. My settings were too hot for that, but all I need to do is get it stuck. So uh, that ought to work. Got my uh, pin welded on. Got a washer because this hole is elongated, so I want to put a washer on there, like so. At least that's what I thought. There we go. Like so. So when I'm tightening it, it'll come over here and uh, hold the bolt. And when I'm loosening it, it'll come over here, catch right there. So um, now I got to do a little. Okay. Let's see. There we go. Get my nut started here. tighten that one up now this one I can't bring a bolt up I can't bring a bolt up from the bottom so I'll have to uh, get a bolt that goes down and then be just the perfect length to get a nut on all right so what I think I'm going to do uh, is mount this fuel pump here with this uh, with this hole something like that um, and then put like a self tapping uh, metal screw right here but let's just go ahead and use this hole over here and mount this one up yeah that ought to work okay so here's what I did I cut the head of the bolt off so and I made a stud and so I'm going to insert this stud down here put this uh, nut on the back of it so i taped the uh washer to the nut and hopefully i can get it all up in there as assembly oh i also punched a hole through the middle right there but I'm having a hard time getting this started so there we go got it i get this tape off now And there we go. All right, my fuel pump, the holes in it's too small. Probably some kind of metric stuff, but anyway, so you can see it won't go on there. So just a simple drilling it out and uh, making it work. All right, so as you can see, I got my hole drilled out here. This will go on here, self tapping screw here and we'll have the fuel pump mounted. So I was gonna put another nylock nut on this side, but I've already got the nylock nut on the bottom side threaded into the nylon. So if I put this one on and try to tighten it down, once this comes up to the hard part of the nylon, it's not going to go past it. It's just gonna keep threading through the bottom nut. So 
the only thing I can do here is put a regular nut on and then if if it if I find that that backs off then I can stack another nut right on top of it to lock it in since nut on in fact there's just there's like two threads sticking through I could probably put this this one here on to lock it let's see oh yeah it'll lock so I'll use that as a as a back backup locking nut I need to get this where it looks good and lined up like I knew what I was doing. Looks pretty good. I won't be able to crank this down like extremely tight because I'll crush that plastic. But it's going pretty tight. Now I'll just put this nut on top of it to lock it and then we'll be good as soon as I lock that together I'm shaking because I don't have any coffee in me yet there we go so I found a uh, self tapping uh, metal screw here so let's spin that in went in quick looks good I mean this baby's on there so these pulse uh, carburetors are sold you know eBay and uh, Amazon and stuff they're you know an average price 10 12 bucks you can pay 30 or 40 for them if they say Kohler on them and stuff but they don't last any longer they're all made in China or Mexico um, and you can get metal ones or whatever but I, I just buy the uh, I don't know somewhere around 10 bucks ones and get two or three of them so the this works off the pulsing of of the motor now we don't have a port on the motor we're going to be uh, putting one in the valve cover so stay tuned for that what it does is is uh, reacts there's a diaphragm in here that reacts to the negative and positive pulses of the engine so when a piston goes up it's drawing so it, it causes a vacuum in the motor when the piston comes down it causes a pressure so with that it will move this diaphragm up and down up and down for twice for each revolution of the crankshaft so if you're running 3600 rpms this diaphragm is pulsating one each time 7200 times per minute so it's sitting there and just basically vibrating and with two check valves it becomes a pump so when you get this if it doesn't say you like uh, you know engine port in and out or anything like that the cheaper ones don't say you know what goes where but you you know even if you hook a fuel line up to the diaphragm line it's not going to kill it but know that the diaphragm is under this cap and the port that's closest to it always goes to the motor now there's an inlet and outlet or vice versa on the pump itself before you put it on to find out which one you know is the inlet and outlet the outlet would be going to the carburetor you put you uh, blow air into it and if you blow air into one of these two ports here that's left over blow air into it and you can't get air through it that means you're you're back you're you're trying to go backwards on the flow so that would go to the carburetor and if you can blow air through it that means it's coming from the tank so I'll show you that all right so I'm just gonna put this hose right here it doesn't have to be perfect and I'm gonna blow in it and either air is gonna come out of this other port or it's not okay so there's no air coming out of here so I'm gonna go to this side over here and put air in it and you're going to hear it come out here okay so it's it's coming out here so um, this side goes to the carburetor and this side from the fuel tank I'll just mark the one that goes to the carburetor like that so now I know that goes to the carburetor 
I'll put another mark here like so all right everybody so when possible you want to use this type of clamp or any type of full circle clamp um, on your fuel lines and then also you want to make sure that your fuel line is made in the USA um, gates are better because the imported fuel lines are inferior so go to an auto parts store don't buy it online or on Amazon unless it says it's gates um, so go to auto parts store and get some US made fuel line that's going to save you a ton of headache down the road so these uh, and then also you can get your clamps there so these clamps just basically slide on like so and then we're going to put this on if if you have a especially the inferior fuel lines are kind of hard to get on there you might put a little silicone grease there but we got that on we'll bring this clamp up like so now this one goes here to the carburetor so we're going to make a nice little loop around the dipstick so I have the uh, I found my barb fitting well that's that's fitting pretty tight I'm gonna put some silicone grease on that all right so don't worry everybody about putting silicone grease on your fuel fittings or your uh, water or chem lines to make it you know push on there better because the uh, it still clamps down just fine so don't worry about that so now we're in bring that clamp up this is the original clamp off the motor that was uh, there already so now we'll see just how short I want it I think I'll cut it right there and put just a little bit of silicone grease on right here and I got need to slide a clamp on up on there okay I'll load my clamp on looks pretty good I still may have to put something right here to keep it from chaffing Good to go there okay so I created another problem so by going from here to the fuel cell it's going to definitely rub right here because otherwise I'd have to turn it really sharp and I don't want to put that kind of side pressure on that nipple there okay There we go. So I think what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and put it up there naturally and slide a couple of sleeves over here to uh, keep it from wearing through right there. I'm going to put my uh, uh, fuel filter somewhere in there. By putting your fuel filter on the inlet side of your pump, it keeps trash possibly from your fuel cell getting in your pump so you can also put the fuel filter right here when it's exiting the pump but by doing it this way you kind of protect two components your carburetor and fuel fill or fuel pump by putting it in on the inlet of the fuel pump itself but it will work either way all right I'm out of these uh, fuel line clamps so we're gonna have to go with the old worm clamp uh, this is this is not the best way unless you put two clamps opposing but it, it you know whenever you you clamp even these small ones down you still have a flat area that looks weird so your fuel flow right here needs to be toward the engine so put that on okay 
So these fuel filters, I don't know if I mentioned it before, but it's for a quarter and three eighths. So I just went up past the quarter inch and I'll tighten this up in a minute. All right, so I have plenty of hose here left over to reach the fuel cell. So I'll put the other end on the uh, fuel filter. And then the clamp, of course, comes up here. This one comes up here. These don't have to be extremely tight um, because a lot of times there's, there's no pressure on this that just having it like that is plenty. But I'll go ahead and put the clamps on, put a little bit of pressure on, and then that'll be done. So now we're going to go back to the fuel cell. So I decided to uh, run the uh, fuel line over it this way, straight across. And then I'm feeding it underneath all the hoses. And then following it around here. And then it'll go right here. Now I have a uh, nylon Y right here. And just like probably a lot of you guys, you can't find half the crap you bought. Um, I bought a brass Y for this. And I cannot find it. So I'm going to use the nylon. I think nylon in, in fuel is fine but nylon in in bleach is not so i'll just put it on this way and if you know give this thing a squeeze every once in a while if it starts getting soft then i'll get me another brass wide all right let's see give myself a little extra so if i have to cut this back out I can I've got some to play with here. So I will add hose clamps at a later time. So there's it. So even though this is quarter quarter quarter, there's neither one of these engines are going to pull that line solid. So I'm confident having a quarter inch feeding two quarter inch uh, fuel line is going to be plenty so uh, otherwise normally otherwise normally in plumbing this would be three-eighths by quarter by quarter but this is going to be plenty because it's just going to be I mean these these engines uh, especially the little one just kind of sips fuel uh, this one gulps fuel but it's still not a full column of quarter inch fuel coming through here so we've got to add a pulse port to the motor so we can pick up those uh, positive and negative uh, crankcase pulses to uh, operate that fuel pump. So if you, uh, depending on your motor, you might be able to purchase an adapter like this. It's already ready to go. Now this is like a Briggs and Stratton performance part. So basically you would, you would search for whatever your engine is, um, pulse carburetor adapter. And basically, if it fits, you can just take your oil filter cap off, screw this in, and you've got it made. So, this one here is made for the uh, Flathead 5 Horse Briggs, the racing motor that a lot of people still race with. And I was just, I bought them just on the sheer chance that this would fit this newer. Uh, I'm sure it's made in China, Chinese engine from Briggs, and it does not. Then what I decided I would do is buy a actual Honda fits this Briggs just fine. So actual uh, dipstick, and then I was going to cut the top off right here and uh, thread a port in there. And then I thought, nah, I ain't doing that. So, um, so the last thing is I'm going to take this valve cover off and put a port up here so I don't know where I can put the port it's got to be somewhere you know on these flat areas here I don't think I could put one in right there but uh, once I take that uh, valve cover off I'll know all right so basically I have a mini bulkhead here quarter inch and I know you guys are already ahead of me but basically I'll take the valve cover off and uh, this side I'm pretty sure will go to the motor side and then I'll cut this off and then bring that up through the valve cover tighten this baby up and now I'll have a uh, 
crankcase port. Even though it's in the valve cover, it will pick up the crankcase uh, pulses just fine. There we go. So we have to be cognizant of clearance. I'm trying to see where I can uh, easily put that port in here. So we got a good flat area here and here. So let's see where those line up. Well, I've looked and looked. We need a flat place on the valve cover and we need a place where this fitting is not going to interfere with these rocker arms coming up and down. So we've only got two positions right here and right here um, that I can see because even if I put it into top here it's going to be right in here. I'm, that would take quite a bit of uh, doing. So it looks like it's down below here which is in this area. So what I'm going to do is I need to see what kind of clearance I have so I took the, uh, the plug out, and on this one I can see down in there, and just to see how close those uh, rocker arms get to the valve cover. So this is one, one way of doing it, visual. So I'm just going to pull the rope, and I'm going to see how far up it comes. Okay, so it's, they've got quite a bit of clearance there, but to know for sure, we're going to do what we used to do on... Uh, performance motors and we're going to use clay but I don't have any clay I know I got clay I bought clay but you guys may not know but I've moved in the last two years I've moved twice I actually moved twice within six months and I can't find crap uh, so anyway I've got some of this uh, bowl setting compound or what they call now um, plumber's putty and I'm going to try to use this. I'm going to have to soften it up, maybe have to add some oil to it. A glob here and a glob here. Hold it all on, crank the motor over, then take it off and I can actually see with my own eyes uh, where to put the uh, this uh, port and also if that port's going to interfere because I can cut that and then see the thickness of it. Okay, so I've loaded my putty in here. Believe me, artist clay works better, but uh, this is what I'm going to use right now. Okay, now all we got to do is pull the rope. And um, if you're trying to, if you got electric start and you don't have a rope and you can't get to the flywheel, then disable your uh, spark plugs and you might be able to uh, bump over the ignition do the same thing so I'm gonna pull the rope all right so the rocker arms went through two cycles a piece I can see that through this uh, filler hole here so we're gonna see okay so no impressions there so we've got huge amount of clearance so I'll be able to put a port on either side right there see if it had if it had came up and, and touched in here, we would have seen, you know, something like this. But there's nothing. And this this is way thicker than this end of this fitting is going to be. So we are good to go. So I've determined I want the port on this side of the valve cover. And so it's more important I find a flat spot in here for sealing purposes than the back side. But in this case, it's going to be flat on both sides. So I want to... Uh, Put it over here toward the corner about right there I don't want it where where part of this flat is going to be here on this um, incline so I want it want it definitely on a flat area so leave yourself about a sixteenth of an inch margin around there just in case so the way I'm going to mark that theoretically is I'm going to hold it in place and then drill down through it a bit till I get a hole started. That'll mark my spot. So right there's my spot. I'm going to go ahead and finish that out. Okay. So now 
I'm going to use my step bit and uh, keep enlarging that hole. Nope, not yet. That should do it. There we go. Going like this. Put the nut on here, and now we've got the port. All right, the best way to get your parts clean and dry is with some brake clean. You can get any brand, but I, I still feel the CRC is the best brand out there. But uh, anyway, we'll give it a shot. We don't want to. Uh, we want our sealer, which is going to be Loctite, to have a nice dry surface. So I'll take and blow that out and dry it out. All right, so we got to do the same thing as the fitting inside and out. Get, get all the oil off of that. We'll set that off to dry or use some comp compressed air on it. Let's not forget the little nut. Okay, so the Loctite has some sealing properties. So with this tight a fit and this flat right here underneath that hex, it's going to pull up and seal off just fine. So, and if it leaks, then I can always, you know, take it back apart. But for right now, this is what I'm going to do. And also the Loctite's going to keep that from loosening up and dropping in the engine. So I'm going to put some thread sealer right there. And then right here, right there around the bottom, see? Now I'm going to drop it in, and you can see it spreading out right there, so now I'm going to put this nut on. Okay, so I'm going to take my 12 millimeter wrench, and I'm going to see if, if I need a backing wrench or, or not on the back side. Sometimes you can just tighten things up, and the other side stays tight. So this one here, I'm not... I don't need a backing wrench it's already pulled up tight so I'm just going to go a little bit past snug right there and that's going to be good so nice and uh, tight that'll that'll seal up like crazy glue thick crazy glue so that there is going to grab my pulses this this right here is a breather hose this here is essentially your crankcase ventilation system on this small engine that's about it we're going to hook up uh, a line from here and go to the diaphragm side of that uh, fuel pump and we'll be able to uh, see if it pumps this will be a perfect spot for one of those uh, fuel line clamps and I don't have any and so I at one time I bought these uh, nylon clamps like this and uh, I bought a whole pack of them and usually they don't have the size you actually need so I'm going to give it a try and see if this will clamp down on it if it does fine if not you guys can figure it out go to the auto parts store and get you fuel line clamps fuel hose clamps I mean all right so the pulse line goes here from the engine to the diaphragm all right and again I don't have a proper clamp I mean this would be a proper clamp if it's the right size so it's just something I'm implementing right now to get me by I'll show you on the side what it's actually doing. Okay, now that's good and tight. That's going to work there. This uh, 
brass fitting was just a little bit undersized. That's why it fit a little loose. It's probably all metric, so it's probably seven millimeter instead of quarter inch. So everything looks good. Um, I've got a whole my fuel cell is full, so I'm gonna test it out here. I'll put a few more clamps on and we'll test it out. Well, I was gonna put some hoses over here, but I've I found some of my high temperature silicone foam. It's like a pad. Uh, this has already been uh, subject to high heat right here. I mean, more than 550 degrees. I think that's what this is rated for. But I'm just going to slip that underneath all this business and then put a nylon tie around it. So it's going to take a little doing here, but I got that one on there. I was just looking around the shop and I'm like, that silicone foam will work. High heat. Let's see. If you watch my uh, pressure washing build, you'll see why I got it and where it went on that. So, I mean, probably not perfect, but that's going to keep it. I'll put another, another one here to make it look better, but I mean, that's going to do the job. All right, there's you some shade tree mechanic crap right there. So I'm going to take the spark plug out so when I uh, see if it's working and bleed the line out that it's not pulling my battery down. And also it'll spin a lot faster. Man, just looking at that, it looks like a mess. But you guys can do better than that. So do something cooler than that. Now I'm kind of... Kind of keeping got that a little close yeah it's gonna work all right spark plug is out i'll put my uh, camera a little closer and we're going to spin it see how long it takes for us to get some fuel up in that filter all right here we go I was counting in my head that was a full 60 seconds but anyway we are uh, we got the fuel up here it's working all right so I've got the spark plug back in it and uh, I'm gonna fire it up for the first time this spring been setting three or four months over the winter um, I think I got most everything hooked up but anyway I just want to hear it run so let's see there choke on So anyway, I'm going to love not putting fuel in it on every job. So uh, as always, like and subscribe, share my videos and my content to uh, all your buddies on the forums. And until next time, take care.